Hello and welcome back to GameSpot's continuing coverage of E3 2013. You're watching the GameSpot stage. My name is Daniel DeWire and I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Michael McMain. Hi, how are you doing, Daniel? The creator of Lichdom Battle Mage, or one of the many creators of Lichdom Battle Mage. That's correct. Uh, this is a game which we have been playing a lot of in the GameSpot office. It's also one that we like to call Lichdom Battle Mage. Battle so Mage. if you want to release that in Europe <laughs> as that name, I think okay. it'll work. Um, it's a really gorgeous looking game. Thank uh, you. I know we've got a new fancy uh, player on the GameSpot stream, so before I get into the nitty gritty, I think we should just check out the gameplay and you uh, explain exactly what we're looking at here. So we've got uh, Josh Van Belt, our producer, playing here, and this is a new level that we just added to our alpha release, which is coming out this Monday. Cool. Uh, the full release of the game is on August 26th. You guys have been in Steam Early Access for a couple of months now, right? For, yeah, about 12 weeks. Okay. So, um, and this represents our third release, the one that's coming out next week. So this is uh, the third level that we've added to the gameplay here, and it's called the Maelstrom. And it's a, kind of an underground area where the magic of a cataclysmic event had happened a long time ago. And we've got this whirlpool that's all frozen solid with all the ships and everything in it, so you're making your way to the bottom of it. Uh, first thing to say about this is I, uh, I remember seeing this in, in person uh, a couple of weeks ago. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, this is CryEngine, is that right? That is correct, yes. And so w has that allowed you to do stuff do you think that you haven't seen in any other first-person role-playing Magic games? Yeah, there's no doubt that you know, CryEngine has really helped us to achieve a visual style that's very stunning and very different from everything else. And we've tried to sort of make it our own, right? Give it our own look, and, and we've worked very hard at that. Mm. Uh, so the interesting thing about uh, List of Battle Mage is that the RPGs, almost the, the first choice you make is deciding what type of character you want to be. Um, not that that isn't the case here, there certainly is customization, but I guess the, if there was a USP of Lich the Battle Mage is that you were a friggin' really powerful mage. That's correct. So you, pay, you play as a mage. We call it being an unmitigated badass. <laughs> okay. OP mage. That's right. Uh, so within that class, though, you were able to forge your own magic spells and whatnot. Right, and what we did is, you know, we looked at this and we said, what do people typically do with mages? They put constraints on them, like cooldowns and mana bars to yes. make them equal to other classes. We remove all of that. We take that away. And usually people say, well, doesn't that mean the game's going to be easy? But it's very challenging. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's a challenging game. So you're saying that like, uh, the, the, the sort of downsizing of mages in other games is a design based entirely on the existence of the other characters, kind of? Correct. And you know, how, do we, how do we learn how to play mages in games? We learn by doing things like kiting yeah. and running away, right? Because you can't let anything touch you. You're, you're a glass cannon, right? Yeah. Well, we wanted to deliver something different. We wanted to deliver a titanium cannon. So we weaponize your defensive abilities so you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with your enemies and bring the fight right into them. Let's look at this stuff. The, the customization so with this, this spell crafting. crafting is really incredible. So what Josh is doing right here is he's crafting himself a new shield. We've got three different shields styles for the type of gameplay you want, whether you want to be toe-to-toe -to -toe and mm. tanky and stand up front with the enemies or strategic and far off and laying waste to them with large AOEs. So he's crafting some different spells. He's making himself a uh, mastery ice spell, or in this case, a destruction ice spell, so he can nuke his enemies really hard. Uh, I want to remind the folks at home, if they have any questions for Michael, uh, please send them to me, ask Danny O'Dwyer on Twitter, and I'll make sure I, I, I put them over as quickly as possible. Uh, so you guys are ready to be close to launch. This is coming out uh, later this year, like That's August right, time? That's right, about 12 weeks, yeah. Uh, how long have you been working on Lisha Battle So it's a little over two years. That doesn't seem like an extraordinarily long amount of time. Well, we did have some R&D in the beginning. That We had about a couple of years while we were trying to figure out exactly what type of game we wanted to build. Yeah. We knew from the beginning. I knew immediately I wanted to, play, to create a mage game. That's my passion. That's yeah. what I love. Um, but uh, this game, what we're looking at here, has been in production for about two years. Uh, the environment here is absolutely gorgeous. I remember it's what we showed on the lobby a number of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a much uh, less snowy, much more uh, fauna-rich environment. Right. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the scale of the world, how the levels are put together, and the different types of environments? Yeah, so we have a very crafted approach to our gameplay in that you, know, you enter your level and you move your way through it, and we have some exploration areas and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, the levels are designed to give you somewhere between three to four hours of play each. Um, our total gameplay experience is going to be about 30 hours. Oh wow! Okay. So, uh, do you expect? Is there a? Is it a linear progression in terms of storyline as well? Is there an end game that you're eventually going to? Yeah. Reach? So we we have this concept of you play through a story and then there's a new game plus kind of mode where you're able to play and continue to get more powerful loot, face more powerful challenges, bosses that scale bigger, and so yeah. forth. Uh, you guys have been very good with the, your community. It seems it's one of the. 
the, the, maybe the benefits of Steam Early Access, and you guys seem to have embraced it and listening to your community about what they want. Is this the type of game that when you guys come out in August, you're going to continue to release new levels and uh, add on to it? Yeah, yeah, we're very interested in that. And one of my uh, many titles is Associate Community Manager. I'm very active out there with the, uh, the yeah. player community. Because that's, that's, that's how you get this. You know, we look at, we, we've gone through uh, two different releases to our community in Early Access, and this will be our third one. Mm. This is fundamentally different than what you guys looked at the last time yeah, we had. There's true. a lot of changes to this, and that all came from the community. Came really? from the players, yeah, their feedback. In fact, one of the sigils that we added to the game is lightning. We brought in four of our hardcore players, our advocates, yeah. brought them into a developer roundtable, and they designed the lightning Oh, really? Spell. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, one of the most interesting things uh, about this, I was talking to you before we went live, is that uh, this is actually the first game you've ever worked on? That is correct, and you me had personally. A, you had an we do have a lot of industry veterans, but <laughs> yeah. it's the first for me. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you guys just picked up CryEngine and came out yeah. with this, this beauty. Uh, but yeah, you had a whole different career before. That is correct. Uh, and, and this is uh, something that you, you dreamt about doing your entire life. Yeah, I'm an avid gamer, like I said. I game 30 to 40 hours a week myself, and I have my whole life. Mm. And uh, when uh, my, my, the previous business that I was in, when we were finished with that, I w had an opportunity to take the team and put them whatever whatever we wanted to do. And I said, let's make a game. That's incredible. So a lot of this, so you worked in some sort of software, but these are guys who, a lot of, some have made games and some have never made games. Yeah, well, our again. core team is an engineering team, and then we went out and pulled some real awesome. industry veterans. So That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, do you mind me asking, I hate comparing games with other games, because it's rarely apples to apples, but are there elements from your favorite RPG games that you have put into Lich development? Yeah, I would say our approach when we looked at designing this game is that we wanted to build something that's kind of like a Borderlands experience, but with magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After. Uh, and was the graphics always a, a big, uh, in, uh, an important aspect of that? Because a, a lot of role-playing games, you know, you can play D&D &D and have an incredible experience. It, you know, you can visualize yourself. A lot of classic role-playing games don't necessarily look incredible. Um, this looks like, you know, this looks like bleeding edge technology we're looking at here. Was, was that always, was that a fundamental part of trying to make so this? You know, our, our biggest sort of pillar of game gameplay is literally gameplay, that moment-to-moment -moment visceral gameplay. Mm. But choosing CryEngine was a big part of getting what we have visually. So when we got that, we were like, we have to be able to push the limits of this engine, right? We've got to, and we did. Our environment team has just really knocked it look out at, of the look, park. Look at, that's pretty. Yo, that moon blew up. It did. You blew up that moon. Yes, and there's a story behind that that <laughs> you uh, learn when you play the game. This area that Josh is fighting in right now are these challenges we call loot rooms, where you uh, attack this machine and you go through these challenges of fighting these waves. And all the loot that comes from the enemy yeah. will go up into the machine instead of to you. Okay. And the only way to get the loot is to defeat the encounter. It all goes away. And as more loot is added to the machine, it promotes so it can get higher. You can get to legendary quality. Okay. You can actually sometimes look up there, see a legendary in it, and if you die, you got to try it again. That's so. amazing. So yeah. it, it seems to me like this, that's a, that almost reminds me of my time doing raids in Warcraft, right? Where like you you sort of built yourself up for this one right. encounter. Uh, is this a game? Do you think people are going to replay? Definitely. Our goal is that if people want to put hundreds of hours into this, they can. Right? We're going to have a lot of uh, extra gameplay. Uh, perhaps it's the antithesis of what you're doing, but I have to ask because there's lots of people yes. on, on Twitter asking, uh, is there any multiplayer component to this whatsoever? No, this is a single player experience mm. right now. Being our first title, we wanted to make sure that we could focus on that and get it right. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, explain some of the moment to moment gameplay that's happening here. Cause so what's interesting is the game has eight sigils or spell schools that are all fundamentally different, right? And you can craft them in a variety of ways. We have seven different ways you can create the spells and how they're delivered, right? We've got a, uh, a lob that'll give splash damage or a targeted or setting traps. There's a lot of different ways you can build it. And then every spell, it can be fundamentally built differently. So you have destruction, which is about damage, mm. control, which is about lasting effects like freezing or burning over time, and then mastery, which is about setting up these big nukes. And in addition to that, you know what you live for in a powerful mage game is you want to see really epic moments, right? Yeah. We call those synergies. So one of the synergies that we have in this uh, new build is called Singularity. And the way that that works is you achieve overkills with uh, your spells and you can set up this synergy. And so Josh is going to pull this off here when he gets some enemies lined up. Excellent. And it, it's a very epic moment. And normally when you see something like that in a game, what happens? It's on a cooldown. Yeah. Two, three, four minutes or something. 
We don't put it on a cooldown. It's about gameplay. You destroy your enemies to, to get that synergy, yeah, yeah. and then you put it in play and just detonate everything. <laughs> uh, th th surely the range of spells you can, you can make must be... Like, every time you've added a new layer to that crafting system, it must have, like, exponentially grown out the, the possible types of it's spells. It's pretty crazy, because there's 168 levers you can pull, and you <laughs> get very degrees, so it's thousands of combinations. Have you, you seen really your community come up with stuff, and then you're like, oh, whoa, 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 that's, that's a bit too crazy. Let's, let's, or maybe this is a good idea, but we should expand on that a bit. Yeah, so we, we, have, uh, we have some players that really push the envelope, definitely. Uh, what other types of environments are there within the game? A lot of people are asking. We've seen the, the sort of the, the feel, like the, the pastoral look or the caves we had on the lobby a couple of weeks ago. This is obviously more of an arctic tundra. Yeah, what other types of... Uh, so we've got you know, a swampy area. We've got some uh, barren wastelands, some really lush oasis. We've got a lot of very, very different, mm. different looks. Uh, one of the interesting things about uh, E3 most recently is that a lot of these games that we have here maybe aren't out, but people can actually play them. Yes. Uh, either there are demos, there are the beta for Battlefield Hardline was announced yesterday. Um, this, of course, is available on Steam Early Access, so can people still get into that and, and, Absolutely. and buy this right now? Yes, yeah. The game is in Early Access, you can get it all the way up to release, and the price goes up incrementally. In fact, the first price increase is on Monday. Oh, really? Yes. So TikTok, y'all. Yeah. You can get it for $19.99 <laughs> right now, and it's uh, $39.99 in release. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah. it's going to go up. Ten dollars on Monday. It's going to go up five dollars on Monday. Five dollars on Monday. So okay. So twenty-four ninety-nine. That's okay. how many. How many people are in that pool? Do you know how many people are engaged with the game and playing it right now? So we have a pretty avid community, and like I said, we're very focused on the forums. We got a few thousand players that are all, you know, giving us a lot of feedback right now. And is that on the Steam forums themselves, that's or correct. do you have your own? No, we that, do it all through Steam. It's, that's incredible. It's easier to stay in touch with everybody that way. Uh, did you, how much contacts did you have with Valve on doing that, or? Have you found early access to be something you could do yourself remotely? It's very interesting because we had not planned to do early access. We were just going to do a release that was roughly in this time frame. And before the GDC, I went out to visit with Valve, mm. and they started talking to us about the benefits, you know, the, the good and the bad, the ups and downs of early access. And I came back about two weeks for, before GDC, and I told the team, thought a lot about it, I want to do early access. Yeah. And Tim Lindsay, our design director, who's uh, uh, a veteran in the industry yeah. says, hey, that's great, maybe we'll do that in beta. And I was like, no, 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 I want to <laughs> do it in GDC in two weeks. And we pulled it off. We got it up there in two weeks, and it's been great. I'm telling you, we would not have the game that we have right now yeah. if we didn't do this. That's incredible. Because yeah. usually, uh, I, uh, one of the benefits, it seems to be from our perspective, in the press at least, and maybe it's just maybe we, we have the blinkers on, is that early access seems to be a really good way of just generally promoting a game that's a game that's good on its own just by getting it in people's hands. Right. So do you think people do you think there'd be this much interest and buzz around Lich and Battle Mage if you guys were just doing on a day this is our video game? Yeah, well, you know, and some people have a good tolerance for it, some don't, mm. right? Uh, for us, what we want is feedback from people in it, right? Some people just buy it and sit it on the shelf to get it at the reduced price and wait for a release to play it because they're not interested in playing an unfinished game. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but that, com that community feedback has been fantastic for Excellent. Us. So yeah. when, it, when events you guys are launching and, and a little bit more details about this alpha that you have on Monday. So we have an alpha coming out on Monday that's got a new boss, new level, a new sigil, the lightning sigil that was designed by the community. Awesome. And, uh, and then uh, August 26th is our release date. Awesome. Michael McMain, thank you so much thank for coming you. on. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Pleasure man. to meet you. Uh, I, I think Lichdom is a game that we've really enjoyed in GameSpot. I can't wait for more people to see it. And also just hearing your story that you finally managed to make the video game that you dream. dreamt of your whole time. That's right. That's pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah. yeah, best of luck uh, with the release of Lichdom Battle Mage. Thank you and very much. And thanks very much for coming on the show.